Yeah, well, I suppose I look at um, years back, we had 2010 wet year and we had a paddock, we um, had some oats in it and they were really big biomass sort of crop and we cut half of it for hay and then it was getting wet and we decided to harvest the rest. So effectively, we harvested that and left this huge amount of residue there versus cutting none. And you know, six years later, to this day still, we get about a 400 kilos to the hectare yield increase on, on where we left all that residue. So, you know, the strip of straw, it's just gonna build on that system and we're gonna get those sort of things going every year, I think. With our farming system, once you um, put the shellborn front on and, and within minutes, you just think we should have done this years ago. Just, it all just comes together and makes sense. And this blue header, shellborn header that we have sitting behind us here is just one tool in helping to protect the soil. And that's what, that's what it's about, is protecting the soil, just like I refer to the soil as the skin of the earth. This crop behind me here is a, a crop of mung, double crop mung beans. So we harvested the wheat and then, uh, and then we had some harvest rains and we went back in behind that wheat and we sowed mung beans. So really the stripper straw is key to be able to get that crop up because our soil temperatures are high but also our summer temperatures are quite high and the solar radiation is high in our summertime. So that allows us to get that plant up, get it growing healthy and hopefully conserve water that the mung beans will use later to fill pods. It's another piece of the puzzle or another step that we can go towards improving our stubbles. Definitely, um, yeah, it goes, it fits in really well with the disc system, you know, and just that residue you leave, it's, uh, yeah, I can see it working really well. We've been using the Shelbourne header because of the original purchase was because of the quickness of harvest. You could get a lot more accomplished in a day. And some of the residual positive notes that we found with having a Shelbourne in our field or the, the much taller stubble is number one is we didn't have to spread the residue anymore or as much residue anymore. Uh, the secondary one is we found our yields to go up with the next crop. And after many, many years of uh, the research and talking to the researchers, we found that that young plant, when it emerges from the ground in the very tall stubble, is a much friendlier environment because the wind doesn't hit the leaves and shake them up as bad. And we don't have near as much sunlight on the leaves, hurting the, the leaves and hardening them off too quick. Uh, along with the, the, the air at the soil surface, it's got a higher concentration of CO2 gas, so we have the, the plants breathing a better mixture of, of what they want to breathe. The biomass on the ground is okay because you have ground protection under most circumstances, but when our soils become very, very wet in that week or two or maybe three weeks out of the year when you get all kinds of rainfall events and it's cool and wet, what happens is all the chaff on the ground gets wet. It causes your soils to go to an anaerobic state rather than an aerobic state because all the chaff gets so wet and it's like a snot rag. If you put that over your face and drip water on it long enough, you're probably gonna struggle to breathe. And the biology struggles to breathe with all that residue on the ground because it seals it shut. I think it's actually the piece that's brought it all together for us. So a lot of the other things that we've done with our stubble retention, and we do control traffic and inter we used to do a lot of inter row sowing and um, really the residue management is a really driver in um, crop productivity. And by having the shellborn and that even crop establishment for the following crop, that's bought, for us, has brought it all together. This protects us all from environmental elements better, from heat and wind. Uh, we can conserve a lot more moisture as well, for, and often for longer. So if we had a rain event now, we'd, we'd still have enough moisture in you know, a month or six weeks to plant our following crop. It's a, it's a been a real game changer. Like we tried it in some lower yielding crops and, and um, I suppose in those situations, you mightn't get the, the fuel and, the, and the, the tons an hour capacity over top of the other front. But what, 
what we found, even in a light crop, the, the, the residue that's left behind is comparable to a heavy crop with a normal knife front, if you can think about that. So if you had a four tonne crop and you cut it with a knife front, the stubble that's left there is the same as the stubble that's left by a one tonne crop with a stripper front. So it just builds on the system then. If you had a one tonne crop in the Mallee or two tonne and you cut it with a knife front, you're not left with much residue, but this stripper will leave more and then it builds. It helps the system build and build and that's what we've got to do. What we find is that the stripper straw is like a veranda on a house in the summertime. And what the stripper straw is doing is it's shading our soil in the summertime, keeping it cool, keeping the sun off. But then in the winter time, it's like having a blanket on. So what that stripper straw is doing is it's keeping our soil biology and the fungi and the worms, our soil temperatures are actually higher in the winter time because it's got a blanket of straw over the top. And so that's keeping our, uh, our biology going, which means we get more nutrients. So we're getting more end release, which is good for our, the plants that are growing up through it. So in, in that case, we can use less fertilizer. Our yields on our farm continue to just escalate. Over 30 years time, we've tripled the year yields on our farm. And where else can you have that happen except in regenerative agriculture with soils that are becoming healthier. No, this isn't the last step on my farm. This was the first step. It's a tool and you buy the tool when it's needed for the job that you're trying to accomplish. And if you need a welder, then you go purchase the welder. So this is one tool, and it just depends upon where you're at in your system as to when you think you would need this tool. On my farm, it was one of the first tools we needed. It's just a tool that we use. It's another thing that we can apply in, in um, I think it just contributes. It's just part, it just really brings it all together for us. It's a, it's hard to say that that's more important than that, and um, yeah, it's just been a really valuable tool for us. Tine cedar drags the material, and they have more problem with the blockage and things like that. And that's where the beer can height come into play in Australia, and that's where the wide row seeding come into play, is because the tines couldn't handle the length of the residue. We've already sown some stuff into it and it's just amazing like y y there's nothing really except for the disc that's touching soil like see so the dust and all that stuff it just disappears. When you get that fine chopped up stuff or the, the short straw in the ground it's you know it's more chance for it to hairpin and cut but when it's all standing you just sort of chop through it and I heard um, someone describe it like when you're, when you're kids and you used to break sticks, you know, you get a short stick and it's quite hard, but you get a longer stick, you can snap it. So the longer straw, you can just chop through it a lot easier than, than a shorter stuff. I think we just back our own judgment now. We can, we can see and you know, you know more than you think you're doing. When it comes to soil health, feel like you're doing a good job and that's all you can do.